Hi Bobcats, this is Miss Lee, and in today's lesson we are going to learn how to combine integers. In Unit 1, we learned about integers and their opposites. We know that integers include all of the whole numbers, which are positive numbers, and their opposites, so they include the negative whole numbers. We learned that this symbol here that looks like a minus sign, that it actually means the opposite or a negative. So if you write this symbol in front of the number 5, it means the opposite of 5, which is negative 5. Subtraction also uses this symbol, and we learned in elementary school to read it as minus. So subtraction, this is something your elementary school teachers didn't tell you, but subtraction really means to add the opposite. Well, your elementary teachers couldn't tell you because you didn't know what opposites were. You weren't ready to learn about opposites. You were just learning about whole numbers. So if you have 5 minus 3, this really means 5 plus the opposite of 3, which is negative 3. So it really means 5 plus negative 3. 10 minus 7 really means 10 plus the opposite of 7, which is a negative 7. So in math, we're not really adding and subtracting numbers. We're just adding, and po adding positive and negative numbers together, which we call combining integers. We're going to start learning how to combine integers by using the integer chips. Now, integer chips are really good manipulative. Um, they're also used when you start learning how to solve equations in algebra, which we are going to get to in our second semester. Usually your integer chips will be red and yellow. The red represents negative numbers and the yellow represents positive. And actually I said numbers, it represents one. One negative, one positive. So if I have two reds, that means I have two negatives. If I have two yellows, that means I have two positives. Okay, make sure that you're filling out your notes and you're doing the examples with me. Pause the video if you need to so that you can keep caught up. First, we're going to talk about combining the same signs. Okay, one of the things that we want you to start getting in the habit of doing is to circle each integer and the sign in front of it. This is going to help you identify a, if it's a positive or negative number, and B, if your numbers have the same signs or if they have different signs. So let's go ahead and do that. We're going to circle 2, and when there's not a sign in front of it, it's automatically a positive number. Just like with an elementary school, when you wrote your numbers 2, 3, 5, 10, 12, you didn't put a positive sign in front of it, but it was a positive. Then we have this 3 and the sign in front of it, you might say, but that's an addition symbol. No, that means that we're combining this two with a positive three. Now, first I'm going to model it with the integer chips, and then I'm gonna show you how to draw it on your own paper. Okay, modeling it with the integer chips, I need two positives. So I'm gonna pull out two yellow chips because yellow represents positive. And I'm going to do each number is going to have its own row. So here's my positive 2. I'm combining that with three positives. So 1, 2, 3. And to find my answer, all I have to do is count up their chips. They're all positive, and there are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 of them. So 2 plus 3 equals 5. Now, I know you know the answer to that. That's something you learned probably in kindergarten, first grade. The point is not to be able to do the math in your head. The point is to see how we model it with the integer chips. Now, I want you to model it with me. We're going to draw it. There's a couple of different ways you could do it. The first way is to draw your circle and put a plus sign for positive inside of it. We want two of them to represent positive two. And then we need three positives. So we're going to start the second row, and we're going to go one, two, three. Add them all together, there are all five positives. Or, if you don't want to draw the circles, you could just draw the symbols. One, two positives, one, two, three positives. Let's try the next one. A negative two minus four. 
Let me reset my page. I'm going to first circle negative 2. And this minus is really a negative symbol. Because remember, it's really opposite of 4, or you're adding the opposite of 4, which is a negative 4. All right, so these are negatives. This time we're going to use the red integer chips. I'm going to start with two negatives to represent negative 2. And then my second integer is negative 4. So I need four red integer chips. Each chip represents one negative, one negative unit. Okay, then we just count them. How many do we have? We have one, two, three, four, five, six negatives. So our answer is negative six. Let's go ahead and model it. Again, you can draw the circle to represent the integer chip. Since we're talking negatives, just put the negative symbol inside. Our first number is negative two, and our second number is negative four. Or if you don't want to draw the circles, you could just do the negative symbols. Either way, you're still going to get negative six. Okay, the next one, I'm just going to draw it. Negative one plus negative three. So I need one negative is my first integer, and my second integer when I circle it. So when I circle this negative three, it looks like it has two signs in front of it. This plus sign, this positive, it doesn't change anything. It's still going to be a negative three. So my second integer is three negatives. To find my answer, I see that my answer is going to be all negative and I count the negative signs and there are four of them. So negative one plus negative three equals negative four. My next example, circle negative four and negative one. So I need four negatives to represent my first integer and I need one negative to represent my second. Again, my answer is going to be all negatives and I count them one, two, three, four, five. Negative four minus one equals negative five. And that's how we model or use integer chips to combine integers that have the same signs. What about if the signs are different? Well, if the signs are different, we need to know a little bit more before we can actually model. So a red chip and a yellow chip equal what we call a zero pair. Again, make sure you're filling in your notes. If you have a negative and you have a positive, they cancel each other out. If you owe a dollar to your friend and you, give, you pay them that dollar back, then your debt is canceled. You don't owe them any more money. You don't have any money, but you don't owe any more money. It equals zero. So a positive and a negative, or a negative and a positive, is what we call a zero pair. They cancel each other out, they equal zero. It's very important to know this term. We're going to use it when we start solving equations. Okay, so when combining integers using your models or your integer chips, you must circle all the zero pairs and remove them from the problem. It's what I call a loop it and pull it out. I loop it and I pull it out with an arrow. Okay, let's do some examples. Oh, before we can do an example, how many zero pairs do you see in this problem? Well, let's loop them and pull them out. There's one zero pair. There's two zero pairs. A positive and a negative make a zero pair, and three zero pairs. So a red and a yellow make a zero pair. One red, one yellow. One red, one yellow. One red, one yellow. One red, no yellows, so this is not a zero pair. So we have three zero pairs. Okay, let's practice. Okay, again, we need to circle each integer. Three, the sign in front of it, there's not one, that means it is a positive three. Okay, and a negative five. The signs are different. So let's start with our first integer, three positives. So just watch me as I do this, and then we'll draw it in a second. One positive, two positive, three positives. Our next integer is a negative five, so I need five negative algebra tiles. This is why I told you to line up your numbers. Each number gets its own row. It's each integer gets its own row because it's going to help us to determine if we have any zero pairs. So how many zero pairs do we have? We need to loop them and pull them. Here's one zero pair, a yellow and a red. Here's two a yellow and a red. This is kind of big, sorry. And here's three, a yellow and a red. 
So I've pulled out these zero pairs, and what is remaining? Two negatives. And that is our answer, negative two. So let's draw it. We have three positives, so I'm going to draw three positive symbols. And then in my next row, I want to model negative five, five negatives. So one, two, three, four, five. And you want to keep them kind of lined up because that's going to help with our looping and pulling them out with us getting rid of our zero pairs. All right, let's get rid of our zero pairs. We have a positive and a negative. It's a zero pair, so I'm going to loop it and pull it out. We have another positive and negative, which makes a zero pair. So loop it, pull it out. We have another zero pair. Loop it and pull it out. Here, there are no more positives, so there are no more zero pairs. What we're left with is two negatives. So our answer is negative two, which is what we got. Now I do want to say, for the looping and the pulling it out, there's a couple other ways. You can do the individual zero pairs, or you can do all the zero pairs together. When you have them, your integers written like this, it makes it easy to do all of the zero pairs at the same time. You get the same thing. Or, other students cross off the zero pairs. You can do that as well. Whatever you're comfortable with doing. Okay, let's try another one. 4 plus negative 1. So this 4 does not have a sign in front of it. That means it's positive. Plus the negative 1. And we're ready to go ahead. I'm going to model it with my integer chips first. 4 positives. That's the yellow. 1, 2, 3, 4. And then we have 1 negative, which is a red chip. Okay, we need to pull out our zero pairs. How many zero pairs do we have? Remember, a yellow and a red make a zero pair, and there's only one, this yellow and red. I have three more yellows, but there are no more reds. So this is my zero pair that I've looped and I pull it out, I no longer see it. And what do I have left? Three positives. So four plus a negative one equals positive three. Okay, so let's draw it. Four positives, one, two, three, four, one negative. Pull out your zero pairs and you're left with three positives. Now let's go ahead and work the next example and we're just going to model it, draw the model. So circle your integers, a negative three, a positive four. So model it. My first integer needs three negatives. My second is a positive four. One, two, three, four. A negative and a positive make the zero pair. How many zero pairs do you have? We have one, we have two, and we have three. So I looped each one individually. You don't have to do them individually. What am I left with? One positive. So negative three plus four equals one. And our last example, six minus three. Positive six negative three. So I need six positives. One, two, three, four, five, six, and three negatives. One, two, three. So I'm going to pull out my zero pairs. I have three of them. And what's left is what I have left. I have three positives left. So six minus three equals three. And that's all there is to it. The models are really pretty easy. If you ever find yourself stuck, go back and try to model it. So let's write an expression for the problem being modeled below. What is our first integer being represented? This one right here, the top row. Red stands for negatives. So how many negatives are there? Four. So it's negative four plus yellow are positives. How many positives do we have? We have three. Now to determine our answer, let me get rid of this little circle that I did here. I need to get rid of my zero pairs. So I have the zero pair here. This is one, I'm gonna loop and pull it. Red and a yellow make another zero pair. One red, one yellow make a zero pair. And what am I left with? One negative. Good job, Bobcats.